And then from the absolute value of 13, you know that we could write that y is equal to plus or minus 13. Now let's take a look at the original problem to see if we have any extraneous solutions. So if I plugged in positive 13 here, it would be positive, the argument would be positive, and it would be positive there. The problem is if we were to plug in negative 13, both arguments would actually be negative, and that's not allowed. So that's why we'd say that y is equal to uh, no solution. Or you could just say that uh, there's no solution. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Uh, 13 worked, right? So uh, the actual answer would just be 13. Okay, I was getting a little ahead of myself. And our last problem, problem number four, it says that the log base 10 of x plus the log base 10 of x plus 3 is equal to 1. So we see we have multiple logs. There's a plus sign in between, so that's going to be the product property. There's nothing in front, so we can go ahead and use the product property and write log base 10 of x times x plus 3 is equal to 1. Now sometimes when we get stuck we use the translation property which means 10 to the first power equals this. And let's go ahead and solve this here. This would be x squared plus 3x. We'll get everything on the same side so I'll bring the 10 on the other side. x squared plus 3x minus 10 we could factor to solve this. This would be x plus 5 times x minus 2, giving us an answer of x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to positive 2. Now let's check in the original problem and just make sure everything's okay. If I plug in 2 here, that's good. If I plug in 2 here, the argument's positive, so that's good. If I were to plug in negative 5, automatically I see that that wouldn't work. So that would be an extraneous answer x would be equal to 2. So just as a summary, we've talked about extraneous a few times up to this point. You have to check for extraneous solutions if you're solving an absolute value equation. If you're solving radical equations. If you are solving rational equations, meaning that there could be variables in the denominator. Uh, and also we're seeing it now with uh, logarithmic equations. All right, so for homework, what I would like you to do is practice 10-3. Uh, please do numbers 9 through 20. All right, so try those out, and we'll talk about uh, the homework in our next lesson. So have a nice day. Good luck.